Today we're going to talk about a really cool compositional element known as framing. We got some tips on how to use it to make interest in your photographs. Yeah, the photos we're going to share today are from members of our Facebook group, Your Photography Journey. We have a, had a weekly challenge about framing and they were um, happy to let us use these to give you some good ideas and inspiration for going out and taking your own framing photos. Say that fast five times. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, this first photograph was taken by, by Alfredo Cruz, and in this he uses environmental elements to create the framing. And uh, this is a, I really like his approach on this one because the framing has a lot of interest and character to it, and the frame itself draws your eye right into the center with the, the subject right behind it there. So it, it works very well. Um, Old dead trees are just interesting. Lots yeah. of texture there. So this is a good, a really good choice of framing a subject. Yeah, so, you know, good job for Alfredo walking around the scene to find this and, um, you know, position himself so that the subject was where he needed it to be in the composition. So, you know, that's a good tip that in the environment you're at, walking around looking for objects that can be a frame. So thanks for sharing that one, Alfredo. All right, this one by Bonnie, um, you know, we think of framing and we have, you know, a window frame or a picture frame, you know, your, your, the literal frame. But Bonnie took this and created a different perspective, which, um, you know, just adds a little different element of um, interest for those of us that are viewing it. So I thought that was just a really neat um, way to do a framing and approach it by creating this, that little bit of tilt in it. Yeah, and there's a nice contrast in the framing to the scene, too, and I think that really helps to create some interest in it as well. Yeah. And this is a nice uh, darkened framing of a light scene, um, and this is a really cool technique to use, too. There's a couple of things about this that, that are very interesting. One, um, in the framing, you've got all of the, the really dark tones there that frame a very light and bright uh, scene. So that's a nice natural contrast and it, it gives a sense of depth and it kind of captures the feeling that we have as human beings as we walk through an opening into a place of interest. Um, and then the angle of the frame also is, is very inviting and conducive to drawing the viewer right into the photograph. Yeah, Denise did a really good job of composing that with just enough of that dark frame around, um, you know, that the building that's in the background, you know, centered and uh, level. So really nice. Yeah, nicely balanced. Good job to Denise Thomason for this great capture. Yeah. All right, and then James uh, Caro, when I asked him what it was that was kind of creating that vignette effect. He said it was a circular window. And so I really liked that this wasn't necessarily, um, you know, he didn't include the entire circle. He just included parts of it, which was a really neat framing um, effect. Yeah, it really, really works well. Um, it's a very complex scene with a lot of elements in it, and I think this uh, framing technique helps to draw the focus right in where you want it to be. So it's a nice technique. Yeah, so thanks, James. And then this is a, a shot taken by James Griffin, and here again we're using the natural environmental elements to frame a subject in this. And in, the, in this case, he's used... Uh, the tree branches and the tree and then the grass and it just creates a, a nice uh, green framing of vegetation around a man-made structure and it's a nice uh, thematic uh, contrast as well as the contrast in colors. Yeah so again James had to walk around to be able to find that location where things you know naturally framed it um, so you know a lot of times it's it's really working the scene and finding what is available there and capturing that. All right, then Jordan, um, you know, it, it framing helps to direct the viewer's eye. There's a lot going on in, in this scene, but having that uh, metal structure 
kind of frame that our eye going to the bridge uh, really helps. And then you've got that natural leading line path at the bottom as well um, that, you know, kind of just helps direct that viewer's eye to where he wants us to see. Yeah, really nicely done. And I like the fact that he's used a more kind of what um, is, a, is would be considered a modern art type of structure to frame an old iconic structure. Yeah, yeah. And it tells the story of that location, too. Yeah. yeah. This is a nice shot by Melanie Lowry. And uh, this is a really good technique to use in shooting sunrises and sunsets and using uh, environmental um, aspects of the scene to create a silhouette framing around the light that you're capturing in the sky. Yeah, that contrast between that color and the, the dark silhouette is just beautiful for framing, like Dave says, at sunrise and sunset. Then yep. this one by Nadine um, kind of provides context about where she's taking this photo. So she's framed the barn between the slats of the fence, but adding that fence structure just helps us reiterate that, you know, it isn't a barn or a farm setting. Um, and just kind of helps just add to that context of where she's taking her photo. Establishes the environment. Huh? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's another really good example of um, using contrast and environment, environmental elements to frame a subject. And this is an awesome photograph taken by Richie Oliver. Um, and there's a couple of cool contrasting elements in this. One, we've got very muted darker, colder type tones, framing a very bright, um, warmer type tone. And so it creates a really nice contrast. And then the, the natural framing of the foliage grounded out by the fence, it just draws the eye right into the subject. Yeah. So very, very framing very well used in this photograph. Yeah, that contrast is just pretty. And then this one um, by Roy Goldsberry, framing also helps to create that depth. So he's used this uh, rock structure to be a foreground element. He's got the uh, midground element with delicate arch there in the bowl. And then he's got, you know, elements even beyond that, the, the farther mountains, the sky. So having that midground, or sorry, foreground, midground, and background, those layers just helps to provide depth and that uh, immediate frame around in that foreground is just yeah, striking. And, and it really echoes the concept of perspective as well. Um, artists and photographers have always used perspective to create that sense of depth. And having something that is comparative in size with the subject up close with the subject away, it creates a natural perspective for us that, that our mind naturally comprehends the depth and the distance of it. And he's used that concept very well here. The framing itself helps to create that per perspective. Yeah. Yep. And this is a cool shot by Sue Gordon. And here again, we're using tones to contrast and to frame the subject in this photograph, which is the sky. And it's a really good uh, uh, technique to use in shooting sunsets, shooting uh, sunrises with the bright sky and those bright tones to silhouette some of the environmental aspects of the scene and use those as, as a dark silhouette to frame um, that bright subject or the sky in the photograph. And here with the trees, around the left and the right, and then the sidewalk and bench in the foreground, all of that being silhouetted out in darker tones to contrast against what it is framing in the bright sky, in the, the highlight tones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is uh, framing, and we really appreciate the uh, group members who are sharing that. And so if you- Those are really awesome examples of really framing. Really good ones. Yeah. So if you are one who likes to have kind of weekly challenges and wants to get, uh, have kind of a that approach in your photography to have some inspiration to get out and practice taking photos, come join us in the Your Photography Journey group. The links are below. Um, we also have others that we have done on this uh, series of, you know, photography ideas. So subscribe, like, and uh, we'll see you next time. Subscribe and like. 
That's right. We love it. 